Hello everybody, we're back again with the contrast paints. We're going to try something a little bit different. We're also going to try and see if we can't get this little chat thing going on here. Now unfortunately, when you do this, the only way to get it to work is to type all this stuff in at the very start. So just bear with me while I try and do this here. We're going to work with those Lannister crossbowmen, I think, as you saw. Now let's see if our little password works here. Well, it seems to let me in. All right. We're almost there, folks. So I'm going to see what we get over here. Okay. Now let's change the colors so you can see my chat over there on the right hand side. That's pretty much where it's always going to be. Alright, that's looking good. Let's see if we can't make that a little bit bigger. And hopefully that sticks around. Oh, I'm going to get rid of this thing too. Alright, let's get rid of this. So for whatever reason, that seemed to have gone away, but now it's back. So you can see I got myself a Lannister crossbowman over here. Here are a couple of finished versions. So for whatever reason, this still doesn't seem to want to... Aha! That's better. Hey there, Josh. How's it going? And look at that. We have an actual working chat. So you saw me using these just not even two days ago on our Song of Ice and Fire Free Folk. And one thing we wanted to test, and this is just a little bit of a PSA, we were wondering is the snow effect going to leach, is the color going to leach into the snow effect? Well, we have indisputable visual evidence. Hey, Gary, how's it going? Yeah, this is not the Night Owl. This is not the Australian-European version. This is more the United States version. Yay. Pretty cool. So this was good from la uh, the last one. So if this is the last live session. You go to the YouTube channel, you'll be able to find that. So that was really fun. That was really cool. Here is, this is one that we did. You can see during that session, this is one that we did with some of the contrast paints mixed with regular GW colors. And it wasn't anything terribly fancy. It was, it was basically just something like this. Because everybody's using these things in a, well, I guess the classic man, whatever the way GW is telling to use them. Lots of people doing videos on that. I thought I'd do a video trying to show you how to do this in a little different way. So you're going to see these a lot here, the Leviathan Blue and the Achillean Green. It's a fantastic teal, and that was the pretty much the one contrast paint that we used, mixing it in with something lighter like this to do all of these different things. Now, now some folks are going to wonder about the basing here. I'm going to do a quick little review on that for you here. So these are texture rollers from Green Stuff World. And all it is is Sculpey clay. You can see it right there in the image, rolled out. Once it's baked, you can break that stuff. Look at that. We got whole bunch of nice fancy bases with oh look a lion symbol perfect for Lannisters there and you can see we just start to lay out the whole unit and the movement tray I'll show you the tray in a second you can even make a little bit of a diorama out of it see we've got the extra pieces the broken ones sitting in those gaps that usually do absolutely nothing and then with a little bit of either oxide paste or flex paste or sandy paste you just fill in those empty areas and poof, all you got to do is stick these guys on those bases and you're good to go. So again, this is where you can get them from, Green Stuff World. You see they have tons of different rollers here. Now what we're trying to match is the rest of my army. And you can see this is a unit of halberdiers. This is something that I did for the Patreon page here. It's a five-part series and it took you through the entire process of basing like you just saw. Then through all of the... Yeah, all of this nifty sky earth and non-metallic metal. So there's a few closer pictures here. 
I did that there's some freehand on the captain that was just this was really fun and this is how all of my Lannisters are being done so this is what we're obviously trying to match with our crossbowmen here so let's get to this now here I'm going to set some of this aside let's talk about the brushes that we're going to use and that's going to be my usual a number eight round craft brush oh thanks thanks Josh that's very cool I hope this is cool too. Now, this is very cool because there's 12 brushes in here for that price. Hey, Justin, how's it going? Yeah, it's a little bit different time frame, isn't it? So, when they start out, they're nice and pristine. Actually, when they get beat up and a little more used, they become more of a filbert brush. We'll talk about that as we work. Now, this is something too because not everybody can go to Hobby Lobby. This is the company that seems to make these. That's Treehouse Studios located in OKC. We are going to use some makeup sponges here. Just basic junky sponges. You can get them at Walgreens. I'll get them at, on Amazon. That's where we get them. And I guess people are also wondering how I attach these things to the base. Let's do a quick review on that. Blue tack, dead paint jar, poof, instant miniature holder. And it seems to work a lot. It seems to work really, really well. Now we've got a couple, hmm, we might even break out this one here, ye old Fenrisian Gray. So you'll probably see these two regular color. Yeah, ah, well that's going to be cool. Can't wait to see what you're doing with the new setup. Yeah, this is what, almost, good grief, almost eight hours earlier than normal. That's kind of scary to think. So we've got a couple of brownish yellows here, the Iandin. And the snake bite leather. It's just wild to see some of these colors come back. Now, here's another old name. Space Wolves Gray. We'll be messing around with that. Now, this is one we didn't get to use, I don't think, in the last session. And I thought, well, you know, pff, Lannisters, what could be better for Blood Angel Red? So we'll try that. And those of you that saw the latest, uh, the last stream there, you know that I took some of these pipettes. And yes, I remember the name this time. Hey, Matthew, how's it going? Yeah, this is going to be a little bit different version than what you've seen, I think, on some of the other contrast vids. A little different take on them. So what I do is I like to take this, instead of just having this jar sitting out there waiting to get tipped over, I'll just take some out here and pop it in my little cup right there. And those are nothing more than water bottle lids. Now, this is something I didn't get to show in the last video. We're going to try and use this. What is this? This is a homemade wet palette. What you're seeing here is the lid of a Chinese food container. And that blue cloth that you're seeing, that is nothing more than just a chamois. And we learned about these when, well, we kept getting water in the basement. So here's what it looks like when it's dry. Most chamois are yellow or orange or some hideous color. This is a really nice neutral gray. So when I take, oh, my parchment paper like so... Here, let's let's drop this on here. So here we're gonna just drop that parchment paper in there. And then we're gonna turn it over. I'm gonna get a decent amount of water on it, like that. So when we use our regular paints and mix it with it, we're gonna see what happens with the contrast paints on here. I've used the Green Stuff World Intensity inks on a wet palette, so I already kind of know what happens with that. And if you need to store this and keep it wet, well, guess what? Here's the lid. It's the lid of your Chinese food container. Stick that right on there. I've seen these things stay wet for days and days because, well, the food container, it's kind of designed not to <laughs> fly open, and it's designed to be waterproof. So let's get a couple of these things out here. and We'll throw these on our wet palette, and we're going to make sure that that is in view for you guys. Now, like I said, we are going to try this Blood Angels Red. And I'll show you what I mean about the pipettes here. So we are going to put that right here. Now you can see really how thick that is. That is really thick. Now, the other thing they do recommend is to shake these up really, really well. So this is going to be the Achillean 
green. That's going to be our teal. I'm going to throw this right in here. You can see I still got my pipette from the last episode. And in you go. That should be plenty to last us a while. And we're going to go in with the Iandin here. Like this. Another pipette. I'm going to drop that in right in here. And I'm just going to I'm going to go with that for right now. I'm not going to put in too many more here. Actually, I can get the keyboard off of my lap because I wanted to show you how we're going to go about this. So this one right here, this is actually with the Reaper liner paints. All of this pre-shading right here. Now they start out like so with some Badger Steino res. There is a little bit of light to dark shading on here. You can see it gets a little darker down towards the bottom. I don't always use the same colors, but this is, oh my gosh, but so many questions about, oh, does it stick to this primer or that primer? Do you got to get the GW stuff? Well, Steino res sticks to everything and pretty much everything sticks to Steino res. So anything you see me doing, well, it's going to be with Steino res primer. So one way or another, it's going to get Steinal Rest. The other little thing right here, and we're going to pull these out. See these liner paints here? These are from Reaper. Well, some of our friends across, well, both ponds have a difficult time getting their hands on these. And they said, well, what is there? A, we can get Vallejo, GW. Is there any equivalent to these? Had a tough time. These kind of are. So I can make... A red liner I can make a blue liner I can make a brown liner and you say okay what's the obsession with the liner paints what are you doing with them and that's what we're gonna do right now real quick so here is the temporary palette that we used in our little live session from a couple well day and a half ago maybe there's a little bit of blue liner over there and then we're going to throw out some brown liner here. Remember those makeup sponges? Well, you're going to see those real soon. And the idea is, and this, this is going to maybe look a little bit familiar here. And for those of you that have seen the videos before or are patrons on the Patreon page, you know I love me my liner paints. And get look at what we're doing. See how we're thinning this down, but it's not completely water. It's kind of a similar consistency to what we had over here, isn't it? Let's just start to drop this over right over the top here. So this is that red liner. And all this is going to do, it's going to accentuate the shading that we already put in with our primer. It's almost like a little value study. I know not everybody is into the whole art term and stuff, but we are going to create a really, really, really fast value study out of this here. So let's grab a little bit of the blue liner here, like so. You can see we're, we're not being neat or anything like that. Don't have to be, because all this is supposed to do is I throw a little bit of brown liner on here. For those waiting for the contrast stuff, don't worry, it's coming. It'll be here. Just want to get this on the base like that. You say, what kind of an unholy mess is that? Well, we're going to take advantage of our sponges. And look what we're going to do. We're going to pull some of this away. You can see how much is coming off. But you see what's left behind, a couple of things. It's not just darker, but it's also been tinted. Here, we'll do this. Well, we're already, we're almost starting to get a little bit of, depending on how we manipulate this, we're almost starting to get a little bit of a sky earth effect as it is. And what we're going to do, you know, pull some of this away. So you notice I cut up the sponge into a smaller piece, just with the scissors, nothing special. And, yeah, I'll we'll just get some right over the top there and poof. Now let's compare them to another one. 
Here's the same pose. So you can see the difference there. We've got a little bit of pre-shading going on with this. Well, that's essentially what we're doing with the contrast paints, but we're going to do less of this. See where I'm removing the paints? We won't be doing as much of that. We're going to be exercising some more control over it. So we are going to subtract those. And actually, I want to get the flesh tears red out here, too. I'm going to throw that in there. So this is going to be a little different approach, like I said. What we'll be doing is a little bit of sort of multi-layering with these on top of each other. But the thing that really is going to be different, I think, for most folks, where is my sneak bite leather? We need that out here is going to be that idea of controlling it and then mixing it with those opaque paints. I do it all the time with the liner paints. Like I said, you watch the other videos, you'll see me do it over and over again. All right, let's 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 do something here. First, let's see what happens with our reds. And I'm just going to try it right here because I haven't used haven't used this yet. That is a nice, wow, that's a nice red, bright red. So that is, well, you would expect Blood Angels Red to be a nice bright red. Now, this is the interesting part. So people talk about the crazy way some of this stuff pools. And let's do something here. So we are going to, remember I talked about a filbert brush. So I just kind of squeeze the bristles there. Look at that. We got chisel edge. But we got this whole flat surface. Look what I just did there. It's not hard to just take away a little bit of that paint. Now you could do that with a makeup sponge, but see how much more that's going to take off. That's going to take off a whole bunch more. If you want that much taken off, well, hey, that's great. But the brush, as you can see, that's got a gentler touch to it, a <laughs> way gentler touch to it. And you can see that I'm starting out with a lighter red. And the idea is, or at least the concept is, can we get in with these and then do successive layers, and but then go in the opposite direction, where we mix that paint with something that's lighter and opaque and do that semi-translucent stuff that we had done on that one sample figure. Now, I don't have to worry about red sneaking its way in here because, well, we want to reflect some of that onto his armor. And I'm going to do the same thing here that I did before. We're going to take this brush. You could even have a second or third brush because, hey, you've got a lot of them. Look what we're doing here. So we're just we're kind of removing that and we've made a, a little bit of a transition with this. This is that uh, that control with the contrast paints that you don't see a lot of people doing and you can do it. I just I think people just sort of assume that that is not something you can do, but it definitely is. I, I'm doing it right here. I, I figure that's that's the one way to, to show people that yes, you can do this stuff these different aspects like we we're talking about here now what I may do is not actually either might not do the paints or I might take this is that darker I think it's probably the flesh tears red yep I'm gonna do that on the pants and we'll just make those a touch darker we can also do something else here and I'm gonna grab some palette paper this is a Another thing we can do, and we really try this a lot, is do something like this. So we just took some of the snake bite leather and we just mixed it with our Blood Angels Red. Let's see what we get there. And that is a really nice, darker, slightly darker, but also now warmer. Yeah, look at it. See how that's a little bit darker? 
but it's also got some warmth to it now because the flesh here is red almost had a little bit of a bluish tint to it by comparison now let's compare that to one of our painted things that we did with the Reaper liner paint so you can see the the reds are pretty darn similar you can see that they're about the same level of light and dark these things dry differently that is I guess that's something you also want to kind of keep your keep your at the front of your mind there is that these will dry differently than what you see so I'm gonna get these guys out of the way now because I need space to put these figures so you can see here this is what we just did oh what the heck let's see what happens when we throw contrast paints over that because why not we can we can and we will so now we just did a little bit of I would say <laughs> super extreme prepping for the contrast paints see they stick on there just fine you can see they're still doing their little bit of capillary action and all that so I definitely think there is a lot of freedom here I just I see so many people saying, well you can only do this you can only do that you can't do this well I was told the same thing about oils I was told the same thing about pretty much everything like, but you can't do that you gotta do this in between every layer no you don't have to do that so again this is the your contrast paint over that pre shading and let's let's compare them so you can see how much darker that is and if I wanted a darker red without maybe having to do a second layer over the top of this well then maybe I just prime a little darker maybe I dust a little bit of gray over it or something like that just to make it darker so again there's a bunch of different things that you can try here with this so let's let's continue actually I kinda like that little bit of snake bite leather in there so we'll keep doing that the other thing that I did notice when and if you watch the other video you'll see when you mix these things together they don't necessarily mix to 100 percent there's still a little bit of separation that can happen it wasn't a big deal to me because I was doing those free folk and I was really looking to have some color transitions and if my green and red mix shifted a little bit greener in one spot a little more red in the other well hey that was cool because that's what I was looking to do so again I'm just gonna take a separate brush here let's see what happens see look at that I can just take some of that away it's not gonna affect what the contrast paint does I can even do it on the sleeves you know, let's manipulate the sleeves so you can manipulate this stuff just I can't say that often enough because people just got the impression that you can't do anything with it at a certain point no you can manipulate it. you can do all kinds of fun stuff with it now I'm just gonna do this on on enough here to maybe let some of the previous layers dry a bit so this is gonna be that flesh tears red a little bit of the snake bite leather and we'll get into the trousers on this guy like so and then I think I'm also gonna to have to get out some of the some of that dark blue too and if I mispronounce the names of these well that's just going to happen because that's just how it is I don't really play Sigmar at all so any of those names to me it's just if there's a weird pronunciation not gonna be part of my lexicon but look at that see what we were able to do right there nice little shifting of that let's, let's hit another one now maybe not one of the 
Here, we'll do this guy here because he's got a nice chest plate that we can see. Oh, and the other advantage of putting those in those little containers, like you saw, let's say by the end of this, I just, I don't need what's in there. When they're in that container, there's just enough there. They stay active. Oh my gosh, three and a half hours even. Those paints were, I could still put them back in the bottle and then use them again. So don't think that taking it out of the bottle also then you have to throw away what's not in the bottle. No. I mean, I'll sit, now if you let it sit out there for 10 hours, well, you got a different story going on. So again, we're taking the lighter version, and that is the Blood Angels red. Could have been interesting painting some of the Blood Angels that I had to, as in the dozens and dozens of them, using this. That could have been fun. Now, I'm even going to throw a little bit of red reflections on some of these. So we'll be getting to her non-metallic stuff soon enough. I just want to see what happens here. I just want to see what we're going to get because we did a small portion of it. We didn't do the whole figure with the contrast paints. I want to see what happens not just for the whole figure but with multiple figures. So Let's, let's do another one of these little transitions. Oh, and by the way, yes, you can thin these with water. I just did. And now we're going to remove some here. Because all I want to do is just get a light smattering of that on there. You can get the mediums. I, I just don't have them here. When it came time to try and get these things, I didn't know about them. So... Well, <laughs> there you go. I didn't know there was any kind of mediums that were part of the whole set. I knew there was some special primers or something like that, but didn't really matter. Because as far as primers go, it's always going to be Steino Res. Let's just keep this going here. And I think what I'll do is maybe after this guy, I'll shift back to my first couple of those and... We'll just we'll see if we can't mix up a nice dark brown for some of the areas. Heck, I even took some of the initial washes that I did was regular paint mixed with contrast paints. So let's do a little bit of the manipulation on this here, because again, we we don't want that big old puddle sitting there. Now let's get rid of some of that. So there you go. I'm also going to just mess with that a bit. Because it it's so shiny, you get, you're just bound to get some of these reflections here. So see what I, I did right there? I know I want this to be lighter. So I just took some of that away. And we'll do, we'll do one more of these guys right here. And yeah, this is with our mostly Blood Angels Red. And we have to reflect all this stuff. That is the key thing to remember. When you're doing the, the non-metallic stuff, you have to reflect everything. You have to reflect the environment. What's he standing on? He's standing on green grass. Well, you're going to want some green reflected in that armor. If he's standing on concrete, well, that's going to be a different story. If he's standing on just dirt, you're going to have a whole different set of reflections there. And then, well, what are the other colors on the actual the actual figure? And here we got a lot of red. So we have to be willing to reflect some of that red everywhere else. Otherwise... The armor will look nice. It'll have some nice shading. It might even look shiny, but nowhere near the level of what it would look like if you were to, say, reflect this red onto the chest plate. And it can tell. I'm I'm not really going to be too worried about staying in lines or anything like that. Here, I'm going to go back to that. 
the flesh here red. So here we just shifted that red a tiny little bit. And I don't even mind if it gets up here too. So that is something that I do with the liner paints all the time as I shift around from one to the next to the next constantly. So here we've dried out that brush a little bit. And you can see we can then go ahead and manipulate some of that. Take some of it away. I can use my finger if I want. All right, let's go back around here. I'm going to get some of these extra ones out of the way. Now I see we've got another portion of this that we've got to do. So we'll just do that real quick here. And like I said, these number eight round craft brushes, I mean, I'm going to throw a little touch of that blue in there. See how much darker that makes it? Look at the difference right there. Now, like I said, some of these will dry almost a little darker and some will almost dry a little bit lighter. You just sort of have to get used to each one. You basically have to try them out and see what happens. Okay. So you can see we're already starting to get that nice light to dark stuff going on there. Now we're going to I'm going to start separating some things out. I want to get my paint jars where they should be. Well, at least away from where they shouldn't be. And let's see what happened now that these are starting to dry a bit. So yeah, you can really see how much influence that pre-shading had there. Now, while we're at it, I'm going to take some of that snake bite leather here. I'm going to start throwing it on the wet palette. There's some of the blue. Now we've got a little bit of a greenish color there. If we think that's too green, I'm going to take a little touch of the red. Takes it off green, makes it a little more brown. So I don't even need, this is why, I know what Wildwood I think is the color that everybody's really going nuts about. Well, I just sort of made my own dark brown and that is a nice dark brown right there so that's the other thing that I really tried to talk about in the previous live session is that you can mix these because I've had people ask me so so should I buy the whole set I said well I'm, I'm not even saying you should buy them at all because again I got other stuff it's I never would have gotten these if it wasn't for people saying hey look could you just help me out here and show me another possibility with these things. Now I'm actually going to take a little bit of this. There we go. It's the Iandin there. That's kind of an orangey color. So yeah, I'm just trying to make a few different colors to have out here on the palette. And I'm just going to go in after belts and pouches real quick here. And that's going to change how we see our reds and this is the other thing I talk about all the time and that's the context of things you always have to I guess the one nice thing about these contrast paints what they might do is they get people thinking about the whole thing painting the whole thing at once instead of one tiny piece of it all at once so I'm gonna put fire slayer flesh out here somewhere so yes, apparently lots of angst over that not being called Fire Slayer fresh, Flesh. So, But we did, I am still going to say Stylish Purple though. Sorry, that's just how that's going to be. Now, I'm going to use some of that on the base here. Again, a touch of that blue. We're just going to let that sink down into all those nifty crevices. Look at that. See how that's changing from almost a yellowish color to sort of a sort of bluish that's shifting around. Why not do this? Especially I mean if you got some of those demons or whatever, especially if it's Zinchi or Slanish or whatever, heck even Nurgle. Instead of just taking that one green and hitting it everywhere, why not mess around with greens in different places? 
different grains, different places. So I'm going to go back to my homemade color here. I think at one point we had developed a new color. Uh, well, it's not a new color for me. Palette sludge. It's an old favorite. Palette sludge usually pops up well into the exercise. And if, if, if you haven't seen these before and you're wondering what in the world is palette sludge, it's kind of what you think it is. It's just whatever junk is laying around in the palette. And that becomes your color. So I'm going to see what happens now. You know, let's do one of the... Now I won't hit the crossbow just yet, but I am going to... I'm going to grab some Space Wolves Gray here. So I'm going to set up a new one over there. Space Wolves Gray. Let's, let's do that. And we'll just take another one of our pipettes here. Put a little touch of it in there. Why? Because I want to get more of a grayish color on those pieces of stone there, but still going to let that other color mix in. The one thing I haven't seen happen with, with doing stuff like this, and this used to happen with the, I don't know if they were washes, glazes, whatever they were called in the old days. Well, those things, oh my gosh, you would get, it was like a chemical reaction where one was sort of fighting against the other. Look at how dark that is. So that was, I think, the, oh, what is the darkest blue? Not the Achaelian, the Leviathan and... Fleshed here, red together. Look at how dark that is. That is, but it, it's going to shift red in some places because, well, red's part of the mix. Might even shift green in some places because we also had a little snake bite leather in there. So actually, I'm going to do the same here because I want to have the context of shadows here. So I'm starting to see what my homemade thing, homemade color is looking like here as it dries. Hey, John, how's it going? Welcome aboard to the craziness that is breaking the rules of contrast paints. Or, well, pff, I suppose so. There seems to be an awful lot of rules about these things. They haven't been around, for, well, technically for more than two days. And already there's all these things you can't do with them. And my goal here is to, one of them is to see, well, just how true is that? What can you not do with these things? Now I wouldn't suggest, see, um, one of the things I'm going to also do is try these on vehicles. Because that is something I've heard is as far as those large flat surfaces and I think I've got a way to help you out with that and that is actually where you take the contrast paints and mix them in with regular paints say you never learn anything unless you try it so we are going to experiment and we'll see what happens if it doesn't work well then you know it doesn't work because I've had people ask me, I said, well, what if you try and it doesn't work? I said, well, I know a whole lot more than I did not that long ago. So like I said, this is my mixed up color here. And that was a touch of, you've got your snake bite leather, some of that blue. And I think there is even some of the flesh here, red thrown in. Now, I don't want to get into deep into color theory and all that, but and this is not really deep into color theory. What makes every color? Well, red, yellow, and blue. And as you can see, we've got a red, yellow, and blue out on the palette. Therefore, I can make a whole bunch of nifty colors with it. It just stands to reason. Now, here we're taking... 
this is the space wolves gray and I haven't cleaned out the brush at all you can see that but look at how it's look at how it's mixing and instead of being that bluish gray it changes color in some places now I've got my really dark mix that's darn near palette sludge there and we're gonna put that around right around that right around there there is oh gosh I'm sure it's called black Templar there's a black contrast paint I don't know if I would ever use that because I can make all kinds of fantastic grays we'll get into that later again those of you that saw the previous one or any of my other ones that involve white or gray you already know that I here, let's let's do this with the makeup sponge we haven't done this yet so see what happens there what we're gonna do we're gonna pull this away so you say wait a minute, I can't see my victory thing well yeah, maybe you just take some of it away and then you can so we're going to use, let's see, we're going to go into that brownish color that we made. Do our leathers and such. Now, I have to, this is all on the fly. I did no, there was no real practice with this whatsoever. We just, I was screwing around with that one crossbowman in the live session the other day just to see what would happen. That is the extent of the practice I have had. And then there was the, obviously, the messing around with the, with the free folk. There we go. Now, let's see, we got the pouches there. I'm going to get back into the Space Wolves gray here around the exterior. And then I'm going to go in with this over the top and I'm going to show you some other painted ones here so you get a kind of a sense of what's supposed to happen that ultimately I'm get a little bit of red in there this is just nice deep rich dark color here right around that edge and there you go you can see how that's settling down in there and starting to reveal all that texture. Hey, Chad, don't use contrast paints for up to 30 minutes after eating <laughs> or swimming. Oh, hey there, Munchkin Modeling Man. How's it going? I'm going to scroll up here just to see if I missed anybody else. Nope, nope. Now, aha, here we go. So I've got a few figures here. Let's look at these. That are essentially that's a similar base. So see what we got here. We got Sandor Clegane. We got Jeffrey Barathon, Baratheon. Sorry. So this is eventually what those will look like. Now here's that Fleur de Lis style base. This is on one of the King's Guard here. So this is ultimately what we're gonna do. But for now, we were just looking to get that kind of shading. Ah, there we go. No, now there's no more reflection. So that's what we were looking to do eventually. We're also looking to do some of that nifty non-metallic stuff. Now we got to do these crossbows here. And I'm going to try and find one of my finished ones. So these actually had... So it wasn't a super dark brown there. Let's see if we can't make ourselves a new sort of brown. So I'm going to take some of that Space Wolves gray again and then a little bit of my this over here that must be the and I will look it up not snake bite leather that is actually probably the fire slayer flesh and I'm going to throw this right over the top of our crossbow here and we'll hit these And here, you know, I am, just for the heck of it, I'm going to take one of my makeup sponges that I've chopped up a bit. And I'm going to take some of that away. You can see there's going to be a little bit that comes off of there, like so. I can take more or less off of here. 
but this is the kind of manipulation they can help because this is that large flat surface remember people are saying that those are doomsday for the contrast paints well maybe just the contrast paints need a little help along the way look what I just did there see how much more lightness there is just in that little spot and all it took was a piece of makeup sponge and be willing to just take a little bit of that away it's all still down in the crevice where you're supposed to be right but maybe we just saved ourselves some work doing that oh I would think we did I would definitely think that we did and we'll we'll try it again on this one we'll see if we'll see if that was a fluke will it work again my guess is it will so here we go we got it piled up on there that's not really nifty that's not special we don't want that we're going to change it from that with our sponge here make sure you can see it and you notice I kind of start from out here and I'll work my way in now we'll compare that one to that one so I like the side on the right better so I'm going to do that same thing again and you see we pulled away some of the paint right there we're just controlling we're exercising some control over these washes we're going to do that once again right here you see that that now comes out a little brighter to me it doesn't really matter because we're going to be painting over that anyways but for some folks that are looking for that to be their one layer you just did with that one little couple seconds few little extra seconds with the makeup sponge look what you're able to do you're able to create a whole bunch of extra shading that was not there in the first place and now that's cool it's something that I'm just used to doing all the time with the Reaper paints the green stuff world intensity inks I'll show you those in a second here so once again I think I can even take my finger and just wipe away some of the extra so look at that so we have more light to dark here we didn't have anything there so these these intensity inks here, these are really similar they're similar in the, the consistency they're similar in the intensity they do kind of a lot of the same things that these do and they cover just about as well they have the same kind of capillary action like I said, there's just a lot of things that they do, which is really similar. So I can see there's a few pouch areas here that I forgot. So I'm just going to hit those. Like I said, as much as I would like to work on the entire unit, I also can't be at this for five hours. So, <laughs> yeah, and when I do the army painting tutorials, those are, like I said, they can be several hours long because of what I'm trying to do. So again, a little bit of Space Wolves Gray, getting into that mix. Ah, and I, I try to, I guess that's why I always try and push things like this, not knowing quite what's going to happen, because it sort of takes away the easy, because I, I know for myself, when I was doing the 2D art thing, and I would see people doing their little demonstrations, not really aware that they'd probably done that exact same painting the exact same one with the exact same paint a hundred times maybe 200 times you could have you could have hit them with a brick they could have been unconscious and they still could have painted the thing because they've done it that many times that's why I try to focus like this stuff that I've never done before using it in ways that I've never used it before because, I don't know, it, it makes it a little more difficult. But if you can make the difficult look easy, then hopefully it makes it a little less scary for people. With with the freehand stuff. Everyone is like, oh, I'm worried I'm going to mess up this thing with the freehand or object source lighting. It's the same thing. If you check out my videos on object source lighting freehand all that sort of stuff you're gonna see that the freehand and the object source lighting starts out at the beginning not at the end so what does it do it removes that fear that people have 
So we've now been left with our metals. What do we want to do with those? So I believe that is, yeah, that's my teal. And it's so funny because, oh my gosh, what was it? Just a couple days ago, heard a video where someone said, you'll never, ever use teal, ever. I said, well, yeah, that's not quite the case. So this is some of the Leviathan blue. I just needed myself a dark blue, too. So I'm just going to throw that over here so that I've got it. And we'll just Is there a space? Yep. Looks like you can see all that there. Now, do we need some more? Space was great. Nah, not really. Not really. We're going to take some of this now. And what's left of the Space Wolves Gray? Yeah, I will. I'm going to grab one more brush full of the Space Wolves Gray here. Just drop some in here right into, blam, right into that. Yes, I like to do sound effects. So now we've got another color that we've mixed up. I'm going to throw this over the top. I'm even going to take a little bit of the dark blue in there like so. So we've got these collars here to do. Not going to do... Well, I will, I'll do the bracers too. What the heck? What is there to lose? Nobody's going to die. Well, maybe somebody will. Now, I am going to do the same thing. I start to manipulate this. So we got this big old nasty puddle there. We don't want that there. Oh, look, it's gone. We want to lighten this up up here. Oh, look, we can. On the bracer, we want to lighten that up. We can. We can even do a little bit more chest plate same thing so we're just taking away some of that you can add and subtract I do it all the time with the Reaper paints now we're finding out can we do it with these and I'm also gonna do you can't quite see that that's just thin down with a little bit of water and that's gonna throw that over the top here So you can already see we're starting to get, there'd be some people that would be absolutely delirious just with this, what just happened right here. And if you don't want to do non-metallic, what if you just had some kind of, maybe, I don't know if a bright as a mithril silver, ah, maybe a mithril silver, you throw this over the top, and all of a sudden your mithril silver starts to look very different than it did before. I'm just trying to throw out some ideas here. Once again, this is that mix. It's got the Space Wolves gray in there. It's got the Leviathan blue in there. And just as before, it's going to pool in the same places where we don't want it to. And we're also going to manipulate it away from those places. Like so. So here we go. We're just going to stop. Now we'll go ahead and hit the bracer too. Let's do that. And then I'm just going to clean out the brush. And we're going to get in here. See, I can even do this where I make it more of a filbert brush. And now I'm just going to sweep that right across. So look at the difference between this side and that side where we got a big old gigantic puddle that nobody wants. Oh, look, the puddle's gone. And I can even manipulate this a little more. We can even take some away here. And remember, we've got we got these guys we could do that with. Let's try that on the bracer right here. Let's see just how much comes off. So see, we were able to take some off of there. So this is that pre-shading that we're looking to do. Now, some people, you know, they see the, the contrast thing as the alpha and the omega of shading the beginning and the end for me it's just the beginning because remember what it showed you with those reaper liner paints 
that was just that initial I call it initial glazes and shaded base coat in every single video and like I said you can watch those on the YouTube channel they're all right there so again this is normally what I do with the liner paints but with the contrast paint I was able to do a little bit more of this you know I got a little more of the reddish shading in there than I would have just doing it my old way well pfft, it's my current way that's not gonna go away this is just really handy uh, oh sorry John well that's okay because you can watch this anytime it, it's gonna once it's finished I'm gonna you know obviously have it process and be posted up on the page be sure to watch the one that I just did oh two o'clock in the morning a couple days ago well not even a couple days ago yet technically you can watch them at any time so once again we're just gonna do this and then we're gonna start removing the paint again like we did on the first oh we do three of these so far I think something like that so again washing out the brush wiping out the paint so I have a clean brush here set this up one stroke poof I think that's the key too is people maybe they tick and tack and dab at it and that is you can't do that you have see I just did it a couple times and I left it didn't screw around with it anymore and do that again so clean off the brush flatten it out and I get over on this other side here and we've got to wipe away that big old puddle right there puddle is gone so space means shoulder pad right that's another reason I, I was thinking this could give some people ideas as far as the whole space marine shoulder pad thing now here I just I just took a little bit of water in here a tiny bit if I had the medium I'd use it but I don't so I gotta see if other alternative materials are gonna work because you'll, you'll maybe sometime find yourself and say, oh, man, I don't have that thing that I needed. And you need to be able to find a way to work around it. What does happen when you thin it with the water, and I've already found this out, and I think other people have seen it too, is that it's not going to cover as much. Well, that's no big deal because we're spending half of our time wiping away some of it. So we got that big old puddle. Puddle be gone. We'll do that again boom puddle is gone now we've got our the rest of it. I think that's the the curios if I remember right that sort of breastplate thing I've tried to remind myself to look up different armor different armor parts and bits and pieces so that I'm better able to tell you what I'm working on at the time but well it, it gets kind of busy around here so yeah, we're just we're wiping some of this away. We'll do one more, one more of these. I'm gonna a little bit more of the Arcalian, Arcalian green. Okay, that's what that is. And not every single one of these necessarily has to be the same color. That there would be some variations between new recruits. Man, old veterans. Huh. Just go into any historicals miniatures page and find a... Well, you don't have to go far to find an argument there over coloring of things and oh my gosh. So we're just going to drop this stuff in here like that. Clean off the brush. We flatten it out. And now we're going to do that same thing where we manipulate the contrast paint and manipulate contrast paint we can do it and the reason here let me show you what again a new one so you got this see those two very different looking brushes until oh look that we have a chisel that that's almost sharper than the point there the advantage of these big old brushes they got the sharp point but look at this huge paint reservoir right here. You got the huge paint reservoir. You also got this. Look how soft and flexible that brush is. So 
when it comes down to doing things like this, I can do that because this brush is soft, it's flexible. Now, let's see, we'll just, I'm going to take a little bit of something here and, and throw it in for the skin tones. I'm just I'm essentially making my own little bit of flesh shade right here. I just want to get this in there real quick just so it's there on the hands like that just to get it out of the way not have to think about it. So what I will do is while I allow that the bluish stuff that we just put on there to set what we're going to do see if we can't get speaking of reddish colors a second layer of red down on our initial glazes on the clothes so again just throwing stuff in there just to get it out of the way might even make something a little more on the brownish side here not super worried about it good enough bang now let's see if we want to get this any darker. I'm just, I'm curious. I just want to know. Inquiring minds want to know. So here is that. That's the flesh tears red. And this is some of my darker brown. I'm just going to throw in a few areas here. Yeah, that will make it darker. Let's go on our plume right here. And I actually will, I'll just throw a little water in there. Guess what? I'm gonna manipulate that too. So yeah, you can. You can just start to get that little bit of darker. Yeah. Because I want to show you how to go back in lighter with this stuff, but I also want to see can you go in darker. I'm just gonna always have to keep changing my focus around because each miniature is a little bit of a different pose. So there's one. We'll do the same here. We're going to get the again the underside of that plume and down here towards the base. Now this is where I'm going to take a little more water in with this here. Just to see what happens. So yeah, that all works out fine. I can see I've got to throw a bit of my bluish tone here on the chest plate or curios. Let's keep going with some of this slightly darker shading here. Now, I'll bring out the Knights of Castlery Rock. This could have really made those interesting. And I'll break them out in just a second here. That really could have been interesting because there was an awful lot of awful lot of red on those to do as far as not just making it darker. But I was also trying to find, well, can I make a warmer red shadow, a cooler red shadow? And I can see this making that a whole bunch easier. So this is my last, last one right here. But we're going to mess around with stuff like the plume and some on the sleeves. And we're going to take out the you know, some of the Knights of Casterly Rock. There we go. So as you can see, there was a lot of red there. An awful lot of red. That would have been pretty handy to be able to do some of that pre-shading the way I just did on these guys. And the red is just as bright. And that's actually was another live session. So if you want to see that, you can check that out too. Now let's break out the, the halberds. So you can see they had a little less red. So maybe this is not quite so effective there, but hey, it's it's all relative. Now we want to get into want to get into stuff like this, right? I'm gonna be able to do some of this nifty sky earth thing. So I'm gonna move some of these guys out of the way here. I'm gonna create a little space for myself on the palette. Like so. So I got my three out here. I'm going to find that, or oh, is that skull? Screaming skull. Let's get this out on the palette here. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to mix this with some of our lighter colors. I'm also going to take out that Fenrisian gray like this. And we're just going to give ourselves another little blob right there. And we've got to do a couple of things. So you can see there's a broken up horizon line there. You can see there's actually some browns, tans in there. But you can see you've got that intense sky color there. Let's see if we can't make some of that. It's going to be our... That's going to be the screaming skull. And we're going to go with even more of the Achillean green. So that is contrast paint. Contrast paint mixed with, here, let's get that even closer for you. Contrast paint mixed with just a regular old GW paint. And because it's on a wet palette, this is going to stay wet for a while. Look at how I have a nice light to dark, a whole panoply of that color right there. And now you can see right there where I put that in, you get almost more of a sky effect. See, I'm starting to introduce that to the armor, but what's really important is that it's semi-translucent. Here, let's let's try it on the Curios. And you'll see... See how that is not super bright? See how it's semi-translucent? That's the key to this. That's what I love so much about it, is that it's not super opaque. It's actually semi-translucent. We'll do this on our next guy here. Doing the same thing. And we're... We're just trying to think, okay, where is the sky can influence this? Where is some of the red of his clothes on the sleeves, on his pants, where is that going to exercise influence? Now, once again, here, look at this. Because it's, see how the red shows through there? That is the nifty thing. It's, it's something I found out years ago using the old GW glazes or whatever the heck they were and mixing them like that. I, like I said, I do it with the intensity inks to see that. That is a kind of a nifty little thing that you can do with this because it is semi-translucent. And it, it, like... I say this all the time in, in the videos, especially the army painting ones. It's the currency of time. You, you kind of time yourself. You, usually, each army painting series, episode one is basing, episode two is a color test figure. And we spend a whole bunch of time doing an effect and saying, all right, how long did that take? Did it take five minutes, ten minutes, twenty minutes? And then we multiply we say, oh man, okay, that didn't take too long. That was only 10 minutes. And then we multiply <laughs> whatever times 10, and all of a sudden you start talking about a whole lot of multiplying. So you say, mm, yeah, okay, maybe I'll just do that on special characters. So we got another situation once again. This is where we're going to use that semi-translucent mix right over the top of that armor plate there. And like I said, for most folks, how many seconds did that take? This is a 12-man unit. It's not that hard to do it, to do that 12 times. Not that hard. So here we go again. I think this is our last one that we're going to do with this segment on. Now here's the, I'm going to add the red after the fact. Basically, it'll, it'll be like the reverse of what we just did with the bluish tone. So I'm just going to work some of that in here. Now, I'm going to swing back around again. So we want to work this later, right? But we don't want to lose the intensity either. So I'm just going to move my guys back into place over here. Now we're just going to let a little bit more of this get in there. And you can see this is going to start to... Look at that. 
So we're already starting to build a bit of a horizon line in there. And it's got remember it's got to be uneven anyways. So you want to build that unevenness into it. And you'll see, look at that. It just it does not take a whole bunch to be able to get some really nifty, nifty things going here. And we can also, if something's too light or too dark, we can always glaze over the top of it again. Because why not? We can do that. And we'll just work our way through. Again, that is just the screaming skull. It's essentially a bone white. Now, I don't have a pure GW white, so I'm just going to grab a Reaper one. It Pure white is pure white. I mean, it's not that big a deal. Whether it's one company's or another, it's just it's straight up white. And you can see we're we're manipulating all of the more bluish sky type colors. See, this is handy. I got this on the palette. You say, well, that's too big of a stair step there. Well, look, we can almost wet blend that. Look at that. Just a couple of seconds. We just kind of we. We said, well, we got the paint sitting right here. It's on a wet palette. It's not going to dry. Why not? Why not utilize the tools that we've got? I mean, it makes sense after all. Here, I'll get to our next one here. I think what I'll do is I'll just stick to these four guys here so that we can kind of get to everything. I, I did want to show you I also want to have two, I don't want to, but like a default before and after, I suppose. So you get to see, well, here's what we had an hour ago or a half an hour ago or 15 minutes ago. And here's what we got now. So again, we're just working some of these things a touch lighter. And this is that mix. Now here, I take a little bit of water. Because I want that to flow. If you've got the medium stuff and you want to use that, by all means, go ahead and use the medium. So here's our last. We'll just do this one last, one last guy right here with this level, and then we'll just we'll swing back around. So. For those of you that are just jumping in, these are Song of Ice and Fire Lannister Crossbowmen. Uh, we are trying to do some Sky Earth non-metallic metals using just the contrast paints and a couple of regular GW paints. And trying to do this across a unit here. So we've got it like that. And this is this is where we're headed. And we will eventually get there, but first, yeah, this is just a straight up white. I mean, white scar, white, whatever. It's going to be pretty much exactly the same thing. Now, let's get in here with some of this, and there's our sky blue. You can see that changes it just a touch. There's a little bit of our Leviathan blue. That actually gives it a touch of purpleness to it by comparison. Yeah, I'm going to lighten that up just a teensy bit more. And now we're going to work on this some more. So you can see the, even the blues start to change color. Some are a little more on the reddish side. Others more towards the teal or green. And yes, you can use a smaller brush if you want. You don't have to use the large brush like this as a watercolorist by trade and training and oil painter well bigger brushes just kind of went with the territory yeah i can take away some of my excess here i can even take away all of it and watch this i'm going to push this around remember we were pushing around the contrast paints well because there's still a little bit of contrast paint in there that helped this be kind of fluid you can see we just pushed it along Nice and easy there. Again, making our irregular 
horizon lines. So we'll continue with this. Now doing the same thing, always focused on that horizon line and making it uneven. Because that was something that I learned the hard way. Because I would make an uneven horizon line. That was good. But it was an unbroken horizon line. Which is not so good. Because the unbroken horizon line kind of assumes that there is absolutely nothing in between him and that distant horizon line. Like nothing. So the broken horizon line and I'll show you in a, just a second too, and those different colors that are in there. So here we go. I'm just adding some of that in. Again, on the front of the Curios. Here, where's my finished ones here? Yeah. So all of this, like that brighter tannish spot, that, that could literally be the guy standing next to him because there's 12 guys on this movement tray. You see that little thing that that could actually be... Another guy's crossbow that he's holding up near his head, something along those lines. So we have to constantly think about, like I said, that environment that is around them. And that's what we're doing here. We're, we're manipulating the environment around these guys. And yes, I would say a fair amount of this, what's on the brush, is still a contrast paint. What I'm going to do is take some of this away here. Again, I'm going to take some of that just off the brush in general. And we're going to push this around. So right down here, see how that's a big old choppy brush stroke? you got to feather that away. It's gone. No need to fear. We can just feather that away. I think this is our, yep, this is our last one here. And then we're going to start getting dramatically lighter and I might actually then go to a smaller brush maybe maybe not but all the while we're still we still have contrast paint in the mix because as far as regular paint goes and I kind of do the invisible air quotes that you can't see all that's there is just white all the color is being provided by the contrast paint. All of this bright blue that you see, that's from the contrast paint. So let's let's grab a smaller brush and just play with that here. I'm actually going to now go back in with I guess some of this lighter stuff, but still I have that what is the Achillean grain. So this is what's providing that's what's providing that that little boost of that bluish color. And it seems to hold up just fine on a wet palette. No problem whatsoever. I'm even going to let that jump a little more. And you can see we start to even, we start to break that horizon line that much more. But we're also now starting to provide you with a few little lighter some of the rivets there now stuff like on here you're gonna want your lights to be more linear so more like this because if you have this perfectly executed round shading it's gonna be nicely shaded and it's not gonna look at the least bit like metal and you have to do these kind of alternating stripes of light light and dark here so so what I'm gonna do right there So those couple of stripes, that is, see how that's already starting to contrast there? It pun maybe intended, maybe not. That so we're doing the same thing on this side of that helmet. Actually, I'm only going to do three of these because I want to have one of these before we started adding this light stuff because it's really now stuff starting to happen. We can really see what's happening here. And I want to have those things that you can sort of look back on and review. That's pretty important. So we got also do 
this bracer right here. Can you see? Yeah, you can see what I'm doing. It's really, for those of you that do the live streaming, well, my wife Kathy does it. She's going to be streaming actually with contrast paints tomorrow on her More Than Dice stream. That's on Twitch there, for those of you that do that kind of thing. She's going to be playing around with these, and that's going to be really interesting. But she knows, Lynn Stahl, you know, all, Pirate Monkey, all the folks that do this all the time, they know the challenge of trying to keep that stupid miniature where you guys can see it, but where we can see it, and where we can actually get our or brush in the right spot. That is not always mutually accessible. We'll call it that. So we're again we're doing this little bit of a lighter thing right here. We're just starting to work in these brighter contrasts every so often. But remember, we still have to work in several things on our horizon lines here yet. Now here, if, like I said, if that gets to be too light, too fast, we can go back to our original paint there. And look at that. We can just sort of blend that, ease that together. So we'll do this last one right here, mm, like this. So you can see what I'm starting to do. You can see like I'm building up a tree there or something in that horizon. And then we've got to obviously get the that crown of the helmet there too. So this is another thing I didn't get to test in the last stream was what happens with contrast paints on a wet palette, especially when I'm doing my mixing here of the the contrast paints and the regular paints. So that seems to hold up just fine. And here we are. See, we're going right after that little edge there. All the while not forgetting that I can go back in and, and glaze over this stuff and change it some more. This is not just the, the be-all and end-all. I, I can continue to manipulate this all the time. So let's, let's look at our... So there's our control. And you can see I'm going to actually put some a darker bluish-green glaze up there. And then we're going to be not just putting more darks in here, because what is that saying? If you want to show light, you must have dark. If you want to show dark, you must have light. So this is why we're working both ways. See, I want that to come straight down there. We're going to do some of those linear highlights. we got our curios here that needs to be addressed. Now, before I do anything with the final highlights and that, let's let's get back in here. We need some of those. So we're going to do Sky Earth. We got no Earth. So we're going to put some Earth in here. Look, we got Snake Bite Leather. And we have conveniently sitting right here is the Screaming Skull White. I'm going to make sure there's a little touch of red in that. So see, this is... Contrast paints, regular paints. Look at it. We're making a whole new paint color out of this. However, the nifty thing is this is going to be semi-translucent. So look at that. See how that just kind of softly works its way in there? It's not, boom, hitting you in the face. That is what I was looking for. Look at this here. So see, I'm going to skip that there and let the sky sort of show through. We're also going to do some of that here. We are certainly going to do that on his bracers. Because we need reflected light there. We need reflected light on his curios. 
So you can see we got the, the blue there, but now starting to get the earth color. And where is my control? See how that we're starting to put in this, this, these touches of tan. That's what we're going for. So we'll take the next guy. We're going to do this again. And just like before, we're going to rely on its semi-translucentness. But we're going to see how we just skip. So a couple of strokes, then skipped. And then back again. That skipping there, that is what gives you that sense of not just a horizon line, but hey, look, there's actually some guys maybe standing next to them. Because they are. There's 12 of these guys sandwiched on the tray. There better be some indication of the dude standing next to them. So once again, here's our, our last one we're going to do. One more. And then we'll get on to the next state in it. Well, actually, we're going we're to go back to more of the contrast paint by itself. So here, let's manipulate this. So the brush now has essentially been cleaned off. And look, we're going to push that around. Look at this. Check that out. So I can take some of that away and make that way smoother. Is that not faster than trying to find just the right colors or mix a whole bunch of paints to do that? That's a heck of a lot faster. It's going to save you that time. Now what I'm going to do here, we got, we got our steps here. So this one here is before we started to add any of that lighter color into the paint. This one, maybe halfway through, and now we've added the lighter colors, but now we're starting to add the earth side of things. Let's add a little more earth. Oh, look, we've got all these really neat dark browns that we made. Well, I made earlier when I was doing my base. And I'm going to see what happens when I pop these on here. And looking for my original one. So see these, these darker spots. See there's a dark line there, another dark line there, and a little more dark there. This is the kind of thing. And I'm just going to do two of these. So I have sort of a stair step here. Because this will help me do sort of some photos for the block. So look at that. Look at the difference there. So it's almost like this is a guy literally walking next to him. And oh, we can also use that same dark. And this is all just contrast paint. We are just we're not painting in a massive wash form with contrast paint. We are painting oh look, more horizon lines right here. All this is is just some contrast paints just sitting on my palette right here. We're gonna keep going. Right here with a little more again, the dark. Looking for breaks in that horizon line and then gonna form a solid a nice horizon line of darks here two on the curios yeah we'll go we'll throw a little bit here let's manipulate some there so we'll compare now what we just did to what we had look at that you can see each thing we do it starts to bring out more and more of that sky earth so I gotta remember to put this guy aside so we don't mess with him because we want to have these these separate ones because it's well it's already 8 30 we've been doing this for an hour and a half but an hour and a half to do all of this on as many guys as we've messed with and sky earth now I'm metallic not too shabby because I don't know how many times I've heard you, know, you can't do this on an entire unit. It's insane. It's suicide. Well, not really. You just have to shift your thinking on it a little bit. So we're going to do the same thing we did on the last one. We're going to look for that horizon line. But this is that contrast paint that we just sort of gently threw in at the start. It's really starting to look starting to look like a nice reflection of the red that's around it 
And you can see this is why I didn't fret where the light paint sort of went over the top. That just kind of happens, especially when you're using the bigger brush. That's why I was relying on, well, I usually use, well, the liner paints for this because they're really dark. They are nice and thin, but they have a lot of intensity to them. So we got this. Now, let's go back the other way. This is going to be a little bit more of the, oh, sorry, that's kind of jinky there. This is going to be more mostly contrast paint. But there's there's water in there, and we want that there. And look at what this is doing. Look at what that does. See how that sort of even gets this more light to dark here? So instead of just making the horizon line area lighter and lighter, we just took the contrast paint, and with a touch of water, we just did a little bit of a glaze manipulation there. That's all it was. It was nothing crazy. Nothing unusual. See, we can even accentuate that. It was just the tiniest bit of... A glaze with the contrast paints. It's all it was. All right, we'll do this on our other guy here. Like this. Yeah. See how all of a sudden our horizon line gets lighter by default? Remember, if you want to have light, you must have dark. So we're putting in the dark, and it makes our light a little bit lighter go figure what do we got back here always have to think where's that sky etc now I'm gonna grab one of my finished ones here so something again like this is a color test figure now there's something I want to go back in with and that's the red of the plume so we're gonna go back in. I'm just gonna take some of the uh, some of the blood angels red right here. Let's put that where you can see it, and let's see what happens when we go right around where our plume is here, like that. Now that's gonna be too intense. What do we do about that? We're gonna mess that up a little bit as far as its intensity goes. So remember when I was talking about palette sludge earlier? We're kind of starting to do that. We're just taking a color that was sitting out on the palette because this is going to de-intensify that contrast paint just enough. Because see here we need some we need some red there. We need some red there. And we certainly need a little bit of red here. We want to lighten this red a touch down here, but it's also remember it's semi-translucent. That's really, really important there. Going to do the same thing now with our other. Because again, you can't have this big old red plume sitting there and not reflect that down here. If you're going to have it this shiny, and this, if you're going to be reflecting guys that are standing next to him and parts of his clothes and trees, well. We are going to have to remember to reflect what's sitting right next to the helmet. So again, there's a touch of that red. What's it reflecting? It's reflecting that. So we've done that on those two. Let's, let's see if we can't go a little bit lighter here with some of our horizon line stuff. You know, this is again that sort of, we're going to take a little more of that snake bite leather. We'll mix up some a little lighter even. And if this is too intense, I might take a little touch of water to knock this down. See what we get right in here. Because I've got, see this dark patch here, and we have this sort of mid-tone patch. Let's see what happens when we put something that's a little bit lighter right there. Now that's not quite light enough. I'm going to take a little more of my light color there. 
like so. Okay. So look what we did here was if we just carried this right down. Again, that could be something that's standing next to him. And this is the thing I noticed. If you're wondering what got me thinking about all this, it's seeing the Instagram pictures of the, the guys that do all the armor cosplay stuff, and they're actually in a forest. They've got a bunch of people around them. It's not just guys or one person or something in a museum. It's more than that. See, I can't ignore this stuff either, so I am going to, at the same time here, manipulate some of this reflection. Now, this was always true when we were reflecting water, when we were doing 2D painting. That water reflection has to be more muted, maybe even a little bit darker than the original thing you're reflecting. Because how in the world is something you're reflecting a more intense, brighter color than the original? It just can't, that doesn't make any sense. So you want to avoid that particular situation. Now let's do that do that same thing on our this guy here like that there we go and I'm gonna carry that way down there like that now let's see what we got going on over here with this reflection so you can see I'm using that really muted this is the Blood Angel's red, that's mixed primarily with the Screaming Skull lighter color paint. I'm going to keep going here. See, I just wanted to throw some more red over in that area. It just, it seemed, it seemed like the right thing to do. And same thing on the bracers here. I'm going to just keep making that a little lighter. Now, is there something... I'm going to look for an orange here. Okay. I'm going to throw this out there, see what happens when that mixes in with the Blood Angels red. Because I, I want to know. What the heck? I just want to know. I want to see what happens. So here, let's put that. I don't need quite so much of the blue. So there's my Blood Angel red. And I'm just going to mix that over. Good over here oh yeah that is that's perfect yep so that's gonna be nice that'll be nice to put that light color over so what I'm actually gonna do is I wanna see what happens here this is again the contrast paint mixed with regular paint I wanna see how is it gonna be too intense as far as how light it is but see that's translucent See how I push that around? And if it ever gets too intense, I can just knock it down. So like we've done before, we're just taking a contrast paint there, and we're mixing it with the regular paint. So I'll get more red reflections there. We're going to make a lighter reflection here. So we're starting to, you can see we're starting to manipulate the rest of this thing. Let's go back into here. And now I've got, this is the Screaming Skull with the snake bite leather. I'm going to see if I can't find just a few areas to make lighter there. Right there, man, it's a guy's face or something. So we're just we're making some more and more complex shapes here. And that's the nifty thing about armor that's got reflections in it. See, we're even gonna do some of those type of reflections there. On the chest plate. And we're also going to now get a few get yeah, lighter so this has more turn because the armor if it's going to be the shiny stuff without any reflected light it just not going to happen it's not going to be round it won't be convincing 
we're doing this same same kind of manipulation here and I, again I don't like to throw out lots of different artistic terms like the whole middle tone thing well what's a mid-tone it's fairly simple it's whatever is halfway between light and dark let's say you got a a value scale of 10 is your darkest color one's your lightest color well it makes sense that maybe one through three is is your light range and seven through ten is your dark well what happens to four five and six so you that's that's where actually a lot of the action happens is in those two areas so I'm going to throw out some, this is just again, some straight up white here. Just need some more out here. Let's see if we can't add now a little bit of a sparkle to this. And that is essentially those brightest of highlights. And you want to do those in more of a pinpoint, for, and you want it to be broken up slightly. See, I even broke up that bit of a highlight there if it's all just zoom straight across it's well what's it reflecting that's just straight across is it like a ruler standing next to him or a bridge or something and now we're doing the same thing here on a horizon line a few lighter elements there yeah looking for couple of highlights there we definitely want to get something bright right there now let's grab our control one here and so you can see how we're starting to match that horizon line that's broken up Get a little more light there. And then there's that little, it's essentially kind of, well, basically the sun like there. I'm going to put one there. Now, the thing is, if you put something kind of a mark like that there, well, you're going to want to put it on every single guy pretty much in the same spot. Otherwise, it's, okay, how is the sun in all these different positions all at the same time? We're, just, we're getting some of that highlight along there. Now we are going to have to add. This is the, that contrast paint, the essentially the red and green mix to make a darker brown. To make a more solid version of that horizon line there. on the back of the armor and right here on the bracer as well now which well oh, I almost almost grabbed our control one there now we're gonna do the same thing on this one we gotta get that's it that's what I'm looking for see how we're, we're breaking it almost like we're painting in some trees on his back. Let's see, does this one need it too? I'm going to say it probably does. It does. A few like so. And let's see if we can't get... So this is the, the GW orange paint here mixed with the contrast Blood Angels red what are we looking to do? We're just looking to get a little bit lighter here. So I'm going to take some of the, the Screaming Skull to lighten that up ever so slightly. And we're just... See how that's semi-translucent right there? That's... I, I just can't overemphasize over how important that is. It is so important that semi-translucent nature of it. See, and we can even now hit those sleeves. So we just 
boom, one stroke to drop in the, the light there. We'll do it at here. And look, see, now I can start to even start to put some highlights in on my red. This is all this was was just the Blood Angels, Blood, yeah, Blood Angels red. And now we're starting to throw the contrast over the top of it here that's mixed with the regular GW paint. And I, I just thought right away, as soon as I heard of what these were and what they were supposed to replace, I said, well, I'm betting that this is the thing that I can do with them. And it just it took a few seconds to realize, yep, that's what they are, and I can do that exact thing with them, and this, it's this thing that I'm doing right now. So here we're actually doing a little bit of wet into wet. We did this with our free folk. So we got some wet paint sitting here. I'm going to take this is again the contrast and regular paint mixed together. It's almost like an oil painting exercise right here. So how many layers of paint was that? Well, it wasn't really any. Yeah, it does not have to be that difficult. I, just, I feel bad when people just seem to make things look so insanely difficult because it does it discourages people from trying it themselves so let's now let's grab the, the three here let's see if we can't do a now this one now actually has a little shading there so what we're going to do is put these three together so you can see the progression from one to the next so again this one's sort of a middle stage right here then we move on to that and then this is where we've been working on our horizon line starting to add in some lights and darks into our reds I want to make sure yep okay that's the right order <laughs> let's take this a little further now I'm gonna add a little more of the orange and touch of that screaming skull and we'll just lighten this up again the the base of it is that Blood Angels red, but all we're doing now is taking some of the more opaque colors and we're making it lighter. And you can see we're just we're adding more and more of these lights here. Can even see, look at how we just bring that up, and even with the contrast paint in there, it's still opaque enough that it's covering but it's also transparent enough that we let what's underneath show through now at a certain point maybe you just you stop mixing it in with the contrast paint you just do more of the straight up regular paints to do lighter colors well that's fine nothing wrong with that and what now let's we'll see we can throw in a little bit of a lighter Lighter touch there. Start to throw in a few highlights on the pants. We'll get slightly lighter here. So I can I can keep going going on this one here. The orange, the idea is, because everyone would always ask me, well, how the heck do you get red to be lighter without it becoming pink? Well, you add some kind of yellow or orange or whatever. Now, I'll show you in a second here the usual Reaper paints that would be part of this process that you're seeing me do right here with these reds. So that would be mostly these two. So as you can see that, okay, this is my Blood Angels red here, and this is my, oh God, whatever the orange was. I'll look that up one second here. Oh, I got Flash Gets Yellow. I'll just throw some of that out there. But that was, I think it was the Wild Rider red. But let's get some of this out here. And we'll, we'll play with that for the heck of it with the Blood Angels red here. 
and we'll see what we get. So that is the Flash Gets Yellow mixed with the Blood Angels Red contrast paint. And that's, wow, that's a really nice, intense, lighter red there. So yeah, that's, it's not necessarily more orange. It is a little less muted. And I wanted that for things like the sleeves here. Because there was a few places that it was starting to lose that intensity. I didn't want it to lose too much. There we are. Now, skin tone. I can take a couple of different things. Now we do have the... And I can put the Fire Slayer Flesh... Oh, actually, I already have some. Never mind. There's some right there. And remember what I had done in the Free Folk? Now I just took the Fire Slayer Flesh and mixed it in with that Screaming Skull. Let's see what we get here. So we have, see, a nice little dark flesh tone. That's all it takes. And let's see if we can't just get a little bit of skin color on his face. And because we've got the contrast paint mixed in there, it's also semi-translucent. So our, that shading that we did, see that darker shading, that's going to still show through. I know it's going to drive people nuts. The whole They're trying to use contrast paints to cover things. And we're showing them how to use contrast paints to have them show through. That's just, that's how it goes. It's crazy here in Wampleville. So again, we can manipulate that face there. We're going to throw a little bit of this. And some other parts here, maybe even on the pouches there. Let's see. Let us, I'm going to take the actually the snake bite leather here. And a touch of that space was gray. So here's a whole nother, this is a whole nother color we're going to do here. So again, can you see that? Yes, you can. Snake bite leather, oh, Fenris, Fenrisian gray, sorry. Not space was gray, Fenrisian gray. So now we've got kind of a warmer greenish. I'm looking to do this on the crossbow stock. So it gives that a little more oomph. That's a very technical term. You can see, you see that, that Fenrisian gray, it lightens this. It, it sort of accentuates what we had, but it's given it sort of a grayish look. Well, maybe that's because this, it's pointed up towards the sky. And we've got, this is our same contrast paint mix that we did here much earlier. We're going to mix some of that Fenrisian gray in there. We're going to lighten that up. Let's see if we can't do something with these pouches here. Pouches, the, the straps, the belts. Here, let's lighten it up even a touch more. That's it. That is a nice muted reddish brown there. When you have this much red, you've got to, you have to be saying, okay, what am I going to do with these browns? Because I want these, do I make them a little more on the yellow side? So here we just, now we got a little more yellow in there. Now we'll just we'll work on the straps. And I liked that Fenrisian. Great, mixed with the contrast paint. And now let's see if we can lighten up. Get some lighter colors on these boots here. And we can. Work in essentially kind of the same way that we did on the armor, on the helmet. Right down to the boots there, down to the bottom of his feet. At first I thought this was an armor type covering over some boots, but then I realized no, it's just it's a couple of essentially a couple of layers of leather. 
for lack of a better term. That's more of that Fenrisian gray mixed with my well mixed with my mix. And I think that was the that was the dark blue. What is the dark blue? Not the Arcalian green. That was the where is that? Wherever that is. Whatever the dark blue was. Okay. But I really do enjoy yeah, this is really fun having this mixed mixed together and it does give you that semi translucent feel. Let's see, we need to have a little more contrast there. So let's just use the contrast paint more as a glaze. So there you go, a little bit of contrast paint as a darker glaze on that part of the crossbow. Makes that stand out a little more, gives you a little more shading. There you have it. We can go back to our skin tone here. I'm going to take more of the screaming skull and mix it with our faux flesh tone here. Let's see how much lighter it is. So there it is. It's a pretty darn close match. Going to go over the thumb here. Now the one thing on the song ice and fire face, sometimes you just you do get mold lines in some in some places and and it can be you have to deal with them needless to say so we've played around with the regular flesh tone there but you might say mm, boy what if i could get a little bit of a greenishness into his skin tones okay Look at this. We got this sitting over here. Yeah, we've got we got a green right here. This is just the snake bite leather and it was mixed with the the bluish color here. Let's just mix a little bit of that into our skin tone. Oh look, now we have a greenish skin tone. Maybe we put a little bit of green into the bottom part of the face here. Maybe we take some of that and put that on his boots. Once again, just thinking of a slightly different way. Slightly different way to use the contrast paints. Right in there. Now let's see if we can't find even some more highlights here once again that's so that's that greenish color that's the Fenrisian gray so there's ways of tinting with the contrast paints that have nothing to do with glazing which hopefully to some folks that's sort of an exciting prospect there now let's look at our control in here and see how much lighter so we need to get more we want to pump up those those lights there on the close that much more so let's do that and that's gonna be nice having that what was that the flash gets yellow mixed with mixed with the oh, what was the uh, the blood angels red contrast paint now I just make that a little bit lighter going to take some of that screaming skull in there it'll lighten it up give it a little touch more opacity that's working what we doing what we need and you can see it's this is by no means the lightest color that we can go to we can go much lighter than this if we need to, we can. That's why I I try to advise people to sort of work your way towards your brightest highlights. Don't just go there right away. 
Because once you've arrived at your brightest highlight, you got nowhere else to go. You're sort of then trapped. All right, let's go even with a little more of the, again, that screaming skull here and touch more of the yellow, make sure it doesn't turn pink. Let's get ourselves some, a few nice little highlights in some places here. Now, maybe you only use the contrast paints for the first part of this. And I, I think I might have enough of a piece left over from that early part of the, the video. Let's see what we've got. Um, yeah, yeah, maybe that's all you're looking to do with the contrast paint, and then you don't mix it the way I have with stuff. But... I have to say, this is pretty fun, being able to do something like this. All right, we'll keep going here. See, I'm just starting to now get some more texture on that, on this plume there. And as always, if I need to, like here, I feel like there needs to be some some red there. So that's some of that here, some of the Blood Angels red. We're going to sort of taint that mix just a bit. But I need, feel like I need there. See, just a little touch of red right there, right next to that. It just seemed to be kind of a necessary thing. Yeah, I just want to solidify a few little lines and shadow areas here. And I also want to get a few spots of my horizon line really settled in here. So where are we at here? All right. So again, we've got uh, got ourselves a few. Yeah, let's let's lighten up just like we've been doing on this guy here. Let's try that on this guy here too. Well, let's finish up. Let's do a little more on the face. Why not? While we're here, so we're gonna take. This is almost straight up now. The screaming skull to get some nose and some cheekbones going here and an eye let's finish off once again a horizon line here gotta think about his collar that's going on And these little areas of that brightest light, that those kind of sparkly highlights, that's what really helps convince people that that glint of sun or whatever off of armor sort of thing. You, you essentially have to provide that artificially. There we go. And then we'll we'll try it. Let's see if we can get down to his eyes. They're a little bit tricky on these guys because, boy, those eyes are way down underneath his visor. Now let's... We got his, his crossbow bolt here. We need to do a few things to that. Make that just stand up somewhat there. And I'm also going to here, I know I did this on the other, I painted examples. So I'm just going to, again, go along this line. And as I said before, all the 
color that's in here mostly provided mostly provided by the contrast paints now let's see now do I have to decide do I want to go any lighter here and it does look yeah the the wet palette does preserve it'll preserve your colors fairly well so once again we're trying to manipulate ourselves into a little bit of a horizon line here I, I felt like I needed to go a little bit more with that it's almost like a yellow ochre but that's just snake bite leather mixed with the screaming skull So this this is to me this is where it's fun where I get I have all these these contrast paints sitting out here and now I'm starting to just incorporate more and more of the regular paints in there with them. You can see by adding the Fenrisian gray in there it it sort of lightens it but it also gives it like this grayish blue. It's actually a really good stone color. So oh let's find ourselves one of these let's see how good of a stone color it makes well that's not too shabby and if we start to throw a little bit more of the Fenrisian gray in there see we can even do a little bit of quick shading on on that stone right there here let's do the same thing here now that this gets lighter some of the lettering starts to show up we can always do then another glaze over the top of that so lots of different fun things that we can do I can go back into that with contrast paints here we've got the the whole lion thing going on let's take this is the flesh tier red and we're gonna let's see if we can get in on our because this part we know that's supposed to be reddish and it's it's good because that just sort of sinks down in there when I was doing the other base with the liner paints it was pretty much clear red and red liner this was a little different it was the flesh tier red pretty much that's it I could make it even darker by adding some of the dark blue to it I hope if anything <clears throat> this this video right here it encourages you to to do a little more mixing <clears throat> a little more experimentation and maybe not spend 300 bucks on a whole freaking set of these things cuz it just I'm sorry there's no way I would get all of them I I feel like I can mix what I need if there's some special project or whatever where I really think I need one down the line, you can always get it. So that's the Space Wolves Gray mixed with a bit of the Flash Git Yellow. But so that it doesn't get too greenish, see I just threw a little bit of my the highlight color from my clothes on there. So you can see this is starts to show up that much more with each but not everywhere again this is the green stuff world texture roller and I'm not gonna do all of the I'm gonna let some of that original that was pretty much snake bite leather let's see I'm just gonna Leondin blue I think it was I just have no idea where that blue went to. It just kind of disappeared into the ether. That's the oh yeah, there's this tail there, another little bit of symbol. The thing is this is supposed to be kind of a broken temple floor, so we don't want to go too nuts with the yellow here, even though it is the whole lion symbol. So I just I pick my spots do maybe a little more here or there and you can see the difference 
just right even in there in between those two. Now if I want to get brighter, okay, here's a little bit of the screaming skull mixed in and we just we find a few places here to make lighter and we leave it alone. And I think I've got this really nifty gray right here. What if I was to throw some of that here on that helmet? Maybe smooth some things down. Maybe we need some, not just the color of his armor, but see, I just took some of that. That's the contrast paint, the little brownish mix that we made, probably even, I think that was the Leand and Blue mixed with the Flesh Tear Red probably. And maybe a touch of Snake Bite Leather to keep it from getting too purple. See how that's semi-translucent there? That was too strong of a stair step between the lighter color and what's darker there. So we kind of took control over that. And we were going to yeah, let's let's go back to our Fenrisian gray to get a few lighter sections here. Now I could I could do the whole mud spatter thing on his boots too. Now let's uh go back to maybe some just straight up contrast paint type stuff here. And we'll we'll gather out some of our there we go. So that is, that's the flesh color there. There is our dark blue. And here's going to be some snake bite leather. And then this is going to be a little bit of the flesh tear. So we've got this really interesting dark mix right here. Look at how dark that is. Look at how dark that is. And now I'm going to change it up a little bit. That's just the straight up snake bite leather. Going to go more with the snake bite leather here. And back to this mix. Just need to get into my crevices there. And this is a little bit of a review what we did before. So we got these makeup sponges here. And See, we can wipe some of that away. And now you can see some of that red in there. There's going to be a little more of a transition there. So right away, it took a few just strokes of the brush. Now we've got ourselves a nice, rich base. We've got some nice darks in there that are different colors. We've also got ourselves some lights here. Let's go back to that. Okay, that's the Space Wolves Gray. Yeah, mixed with our contrast colors there to do some semi semi-opaque stones. We'll do that over here. It just it gives it a little bit of a bluish gray. Heck, we can even take a little bit of that sky color that's sitting over there and really go nuts with it. Let's make sure. I'm going to mess around with some of the pouches and straps here real quick. And we're, we're starting to really move along here. Now, as I showed folks earlier, actually, this is uh, another one of the Army painting series. Speaking of Sky Earth, non metallic. Oh, and I just found the blue. Leviathan blue. Okay. Leviathan blue. So this is the Warrior Suns also again from Song of Ice and Fire. This is another one of the unit painting things. What was a little different here is we put in some of the cut leaves using the Green Stuff World leaf cutter. And I'm going to go back to the, the blog post that shows the right here. Let's go to the I think that was this one. 
poof, there you go. So that is how the bases were made because we were just painting the base. So that's a quick little review for those of you that are getting in on this a little bit later. So you can see how, look at that's the same lion texture right there. You can see the words. And all it is is just gray scopey. You bake it after it's been rolled like this. You break it and look at that. You get all kinds of nifty, nifty stuff. And there's a little better view than of those halberds from earlier. So that's, I think that was Army Painting Series 4. But all of those available is that, uh, I think it's going to scroll across the screen there on the bottom, the Army Painter Pledge level. And it's 15 bucks a month, but you get oh, at least 20 hours of videos every month between Dark Sword painting, the Army painting, basing stuff, terrain. It's a full service thing. And when you first sign on, oh my goodness, a lot of content comes your way because you get all of the past videos. Because if you didn't, eh, it's, these new ones would not be as valuable if you didn't have the information because each one of these kind of builds on the next. And I'm going to try and build on these, these contrast videos here. I'm going to try painting some monsters, some vehicles, paint some historicals, paint some large scale. Maybe paint one of the Big Child Creatives miniatures with it just to see where it goes. You never know unless you try. And, and I know there's this whole, well, they're only intended for this. You know, they're, this is the target audience or whatever. It, it's, it's paint. As a miniature painter, I'm sure that the folks making the Windsor Newton oil paints, I am not their target market as a miniature painter. Yet, I still use those all the time when I'm painting miniatures. And actually, that's, that's on the, the Army painting videos there too. And some of the Dark Sword videos where I use oil paints. But not everybody is comfortable with using oils or maybe their, their living circumstance. They feel like that would have too much of a fragrance, even though it really doesn't. Okay, well, fine. This Can this do some of the things that oil painting does? Can, I, can you get some of those advantages? So I have no idea why the chat's going here. I'm going to look and see if there's... Oh, yeah, sorry guys. The last few mess. Hey, Robert, how's it going? Uh, uh, that's funny, Rob, you should ask that because, well, I intend to do some vehicles with the contrast paints. Uh, Jerry says a little bit of both mixed with Screaming Skull. Oh, yeah, sorry, first and last, or first last. Oh, hey, Jerry, how's it going? Yeah, this my chat window just kind of died. Oh, hey, James, how's it going? Yeah, Dave, that's, uh, it, it just kind of doesn't, 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 and then it does. It's like, boom. And it's always kind of that way. So, yeah, for whatever reason, my chat window just died. It was working great right up until, I don't know, maybe 30 minutes ago, and then it died. So if, if you haven't heard any answers to your questions, that's that's why. So I apologize for that. Now, I don't want to do too much with just the opaque paints because this is supposed to be about manipulating the the contrast paints, but really every color on here has contrast paints in it. Every single one. They we're just throwing little highlights here. So yeah, Robert, that uh, uh, oh hey, remember those uh, Team Yankee, the the vehicles that I I got. At, well, I don't, I don't think I got any at Little Wars, but the ones I was telling you about at Little Wars. Yeah, we'll we'll try painting some of those with the contrast paints. I bet you you'll like that. I'm going to look and see if there's anything else that I missed here. Uh, Brian Schmidt asks Lannister. Yep, this is a Lannister 
crossbow right here. We've got a bunch of other Lannisters. We've got Joffrey here. Oh, yeah, and I'm going to do a little video on his freehand here, like this, on his robe. I've also got, for those of you who like Starks, so we got, I believe, one here. And we're also going to do some videos on doing that little bit of freehand there. Because, again, it doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be that complicated. We're going to be doing some Kingsguard. I don't know if I'll be using the contrast paints on these. Maybe I will. I've got a whole unit of them, so why not? I'm also going to do some of the Cave Dweller Savages here. So yeah, I hope that I can... It's harder for me to do these... Well, essentially American-oriented <laughs> live sessions because normally it's a lot better for me if I'm doing them at, that start at 2 o'clock in the morning our time than it is doing them at this earlier time. It's just kind of the way things work out. There again, some of that darker contrast paint mix. I'm going to work back into my horizon line, find a few darks there. That can clean a few things up even. I see where I need to get some more white out here and pop in a few more lights. I can always do that. Just, again, some generic white. See, I'm curious to see why the, the whole chat function there just decided to quit on me. So here we're going to pop in a few of those lighter tones there so you have anybody had questions and I wasn't answering it well I can answer them now because I can actually see your stuff essentially the chat window was frozen for quite a while and then just decided to blow itself up And I'm going to look up there to see if there's any other questions maybe that were asked that I'm just missing, not seeing. Now we need to... Okay, I'm going to go back into the... Oh, where is my, my green here? Okay, this is the one we're looking for. I need to just do a little bit of a glazer. So see, I'm just... Got some water in there and just threw in a little bit of a glaze there. And then if I need to get something a little bit lighter, I just mixed in the white with it. Kind of let a little more of the white mix in with that contrast paint there. Like so. Maybe I get a, maybe I wanted a little softer transition there. So you can't see, so you can go back and forth. I, I guess I, I just get disappointed when people think it's a zero-sum game. You just either slap it on or you don't. Or you, no, you can manipulate a whole bunch of different ways. I mean, we're doing that right now. And I, it just doesn't make any sense to kind of just turn your back on these possibilities, I suppose. Yeah, let's get a little... I, I know some of these areas you just can't really see anyways, so that's why I don't focus too much on those. And I'm just going to find a few... See, I can go in here, find a few little quick highlights on some of the straps. Even on some edges of the pouch there. Just be kind of judicious about them. And now I'm going to go back in with the contrast paints there. Got to get some separation on these fingers. And I'm even going to, yeah, I'm going to put a little few darks in here. So let's take that snake bite leather there. Once again, I'm just going to really go in there 
let's see, manipulating it. See, I'm taking away some of the liquid there. And look at how we got this turn. But there's also a little bit of that intensity from the snake bite leather on that. And here I actually need some shadows. I got plenty of light colors, but this is where I basically use red liner. Red liner, brown liner, whatever. And in you go. And the nice thing about the liner paints is they really they sink down into the crevices too, just like these things. Here, let's get a little bit more of a a line right here. like so we'll strengthen that shadow up and that's essentially just with the with the contrast paint right there look at it doesn't have to be running all over the place that is just straight up contrast paint there's nothing else in there but we've got a smaller brush and we are we're trying to be a little more controlled with it all of this is that that same contrast paint and that was a color that we actually mixed ourselves. Here we go, one more. Little dark line there. And again, I'm sorry if I gotta move this into a area where you guys can't see it as well. It's just kind of the nature of the beast. And just trying to now strengthen up that horizon line right there. So I'm gonna just um, oh, hey there, Munchkin modeling man. How's it going? Uh, we got the Chad. Yeah, we got the John. Hey Mike, how's it going? Okay, so yeah, my chat over there is dead, but at least I can see. It's gonna be trickier because I actually have literally my YouTube window on my computer screen open to see the chat so the reaction time is not going to be super quick I'll tell you that right now we're just we're dropping in some deeper darks there again this is just that contrast paint mix here's some of that greenish stuff I'm going to throw that here over this to darken this down because that just I made it lighter lighter and it actually makes more sense to be darker and I can make that change. And this is that snake bite leather mixed with the the screaming skull. And we're gonna get a touch of lighter color there. Now let's see, we need to remember we were using our yellow here. Let's get some of our this is what's handy about putting the contrast paint in the little containers like that because now I can move it off of my surface real easy so I can get to this because we're just trying to get a little touch of yellow on that symbol there that's the Fenrisian gray Let's see if we can't make a lighter stone color here Now I'm back to the contrast paint because I want to get some darker stuff in between my stone. And oh, look at that. So just like we did on the miniature, we've gone back in. We're using that contrast paint to, I don't want to say black line. I always hate that term because it's really not doing that. But let's see if we can't make some, some paint some cracks in on this here. We'll do this. Look, uh, right there, yep, you can see it. See, I'm just going to paint a crack into that stone. Do it here. Now, there's one that's sculpted in. It looks kind of funky, so I am actually going to manipulate that now a little bit. Now, we talked before about, well, do we... How much dark can we add later with the contrast? So that's the, oh gosh, the Leviathan blue with the flesh tears red. It's a little bit watered down, and I'm just looking to find a 
touch of shadow right there. And same thing here on the, the sleeves, same thing over here on the curious. Maybe even here on his plume. Yeah. So that's just contrast paint. It's got a little bit of water in it. Uh, to, hey, one time I sleep and you're a stream 8 a.m. my time. Well, sorry about that. Uh, obviously, I'm, I think my next one's just going to be at, well, my usual time, which for me is 2.30 in the morning central. But like always, you can always catch these things just on the YouTube channel. And I'll try and do more of these live things it just the uh, the weather really got too crazy for me to be able to do these i don't know how many times my voice was wiped out by uh, allergic reactions to mold that was not very fun whatsoever that really starts to then we're starting to bring out all the different aspects of this now let's go back to a much earlier stage. So that was one of our, that's a very early stage. Check that out. So this is where we were when we really first started right away. And see how much lighter now. I'm going to actually move my chat over here a little bit to, so I can see the screen. Like so. So look at the difference, not just in the, the helmet and the metals, but even the see the crossbow thing. You can see how it was all set up. Remember here we were taking some of the paint away. And remember here we were taking some of the paint away. We went over the top of it. And now we've built in some of those nice lighter colors. And the reds here. Let's turn this around. Look at this. So you can see we've got lighters on the sleeves. We've been able to manipulate a whole bunch of this. So our, our bases now are starting to get some color on them too. And everything again on here is has got some contrast paint in the mix somewhere. Pretty much none of this is just a straight up paint. And that was that was kind of the plan from the beginning. And speaking of from the beginning, if you didn't get to see the part where we were doing all the non-metallic you just you can go right back to it and find that so now now I'm trying to find in here remember those linear middle tone lights I was talking about on the armor that's what we're trying to find a few of those here where it's either reflecting the ground it's reflecting skin we actually it's weird we have to reflect the arm onto here now and we're going to try and do that this way we need to reflect the arm onto over here so i'm going to see if i can't get some of my lighter reds and oranges to do something like that and that's the crazy thing about armor when they're doing something like this when they're wearing armor but they're actually holding the armor close to the other pieces of armor they just sort of bounce off of each other it's pretty wild and what's the the other phrase that pays it's well if a color goes somewhere it must go everywhere and we've pretty much done that that whole thing of if you want to have light you must have dark. we've done that We've tried to kind of build evenly, not get too far ahead of ourselves on things. So once again, now back into my white ears, so I can try and find a few more of these, a few more highlights in here. Then that's again, that's that very limited sort of sparkling highlight. Try and get the, the knuckles a little bit lighter here. And 
it, it's tough because there is act there is sort of a mold line that runs through these these hands so it makes it a little more difficult to say the least and I don't I don't want to go too crazy with the highlights on the the boots there so you can see it just it's one highlight so that kind of has some turn to it and I'll show you what the so these are, are the boots right here with just that straight up contrast mix that we did and now you can see what they look like that was where we took that same contrast mix there mixed it with the Fenrisian gray and just started to build up those lights And I'm going to try and find some, I don't think I actually have to go too much lighter to match what I did before. Don't necessarily need to go too much lighter on that base. So again, this is that contrast mix, about three different colors together. I could have brought out the Waystone Green maybe if I wanted to get an even darker manipulation. So this is, I need some actual darks in here. So that's that same mix, and I'm going to try and see. I'm just looking to get that right there. Okay, that was successful. Now I actually am going to try and grab, go back to this little mix right here. That is the Achalian green. That's mixed with a little touch of the white there, and a little more of the white maybe there all right because what i'm trying to do is is bounce these two things off of each other right here this off of this and that you kind of have to go both ways you have to bounce them back off each other almost like a pair of mirrors throwing highlights back at each other now it sounds pretty crazy that's just kind of unfortunate that's what you got to deal with 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 armor that you, and you're holding pieces of armor close to other armor sets so see, that's a, another little bit of that reflecting underneath. Hey, Mike, how's it going? And thanks, as always, for the tree bark. The Mike heaves. If you're wondering where the whole idea of the tree bark bases came from, you are looking at the individual responsible for that. Because years ago at a ReaperCon, said can you use some of this tree bark and I said I don't know I've never tried it we got to we got to do it and it transformed the way I base it created an entirely different way of basing for me that was years ago and it's I was just making I think I made another dozen bark and branch bases as I call them today there's actually a few of the song of ice and fire units that are based on it uh, one of the Lord of the Rings, All right, I think my, my Rohan army is. Easterlings are part, partially based on the bark and branch. It's pretty darn cheap. You just walk out in front of your house and pick it up off the ground. They're just sitting there waiting for you to collect them. Now here I want to get a little bit more light. So that's again that snake bite leather mixed with some of my palette sludge that needs to be toned down and let's see okay I got my my mix here that's the contrast paint there look at that I can knock this not just knock it down but even give it a little bit of a gradation as it moves up into that shadow area there And I got some more of the contrast mix just to find even some more darks. So there are plenty of bright highlights. What I'm looking for is the really super rich deep darks at this point here on this guy. So I thought I would just take one like this all the way through. Because again, each army painting series is darn near 13 hours long. That's a little bit longer than I want to do on a live stream. That's a little bit longer than you want me to do on a live stream.
So I'm once again just trying to find myself, figure out what are we going to, what things do we need to sharpen up. Yeah, so here there's another little edge that needs to be sharpened. That's going to be with that really deep red, the Leviathan blue mixed with the Flesh Tears red. It's amazing what you would think that this would just make a purple. But even just throwing a little tiny touch of the snake bite leather turns that into a really deep brownish color. Makes sense because the snake bite leather makes the bluish color be more like green, and red and green makes brown. It's a thing, it'll work. Now let's compare this again to where we were. Now let's take a very early stage here. It's a huge difference now. But the contrast paints did provide a nice start here. You can see it like right there. That's a nice little start. And then we move to here. So you can see the armor starting to develop, starting to develop that horizon line. And then we move it up even further. So we got pretty much the helmet ready to go. And then we just started to work on everything else. Our boots, pouches, all of this. And then let's look at the crossbow. So you can see all it took was a few little dabs here and there to get the crossbows looking the way we wanted to. Are, are the contrast paint, would they replace what I already have? Well, not really. But let's just, let's say this is what I have to use. I can use these. And now other people can too. So here's not my, hopefully this shows up. I can really see now the green here and the, the flesh tone there. And that was right here. That was that snake bite leather and my Achillean green mixed together to make this really Gosh, I don't want to say dark camo green, but it was kind of like that. Almost like a dark camo green. Now this, actually, we're going to go back to that. Speaking of the Archelian green, this is the Archelian green in the white. And I, I see I'm, I'm missing something here on this armor plate. So we're going to add that in. But see how it's really translucent. It doesn't cover everything. That is the goal. Now we're going to add a touch of light there. This once again is to make sure that we're reflecting things. This definitely needs some reflected light down here. On the collar here. And I need to go yeah, a little bit lighter with that too. Hopefully the helmet or face is not in the way and you can actually see that. Here we are, this. I, I need a definitely a brighter light right here too. This is where we were kind of bouncing these two things off of each other. That'll do it there. And now here I need a little separation there too. So this whole, for those of you that didn't get to see it, all of this stuff right over here, that is mostly the uh, Archelian green. So these are your two things. So this is taking the straight up screaming co uh, skull, just a regular GW paint, mixing that with the con contrast paint. And then, let me see if I can find the, so we have these two as far as our, for lightening up the, the red. So we take the Troll Slayer orange and even the flash gets yellow. And we would add that to things like the Flesh Tears red, Blood Angels red. So this is the one we really tried out for the first time here. We hadn't used this before. So thanks again for everybody and 
Yeah, sorry that the chat thing died. Not really sure what was going on there. But I think this gives you a pretty fairly good idea of how to go from something that's just, well, has nothing on it, or just a straight-up primed one here. Let's see. Yeah, here we go. So something like this, just with that shaded primer, to something like this that has it's fully painted, you got all kinds of nifty shading. See so many different layers. We got colors reflecting off of each other. We got some sharp edges, some soft edges. And here, let's let's grab these three and kind of show these three together. So that is what we have been able to do here in what? Barely two and a half hours because there's a lot of talking and other things to set stuff up. And we've been working on, I think, eight or nine of these guys, something along those lines. So thanks again, everybody, for watching. You want to see more stuff like this, you know, click the like. You do the subscribe thing. That's always handy because then you'll be notified when, when I get sneaky and pop one of these uh, for American Central Time. So thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you on the next video.